Element 25 has teamed up with Nissan Chemical to explore building a facility in Japan to produce high purity manganese sulfate monohydrate, which is a crucial element in electric vehicle batteries. So they've signed a non-binding agreement to study the project and are aiming for a final decision by 2026. So let's get the details. Element 25 CEO Justin Brown joins me now. Justin, welcome to Ausbiz. Thanks so much for joining us. So maybe you could just introduce us to E25 to start. What is it that you do now? What is it that you're planning on doing with Nissan? Thank you for having me and thanks for the opportunity. Um, Element 25 owns and operates the Butcherbird Manganese Mine located in the southern Pilbara region of Western Australia. It's a very large resource of manganese ore and we've been working for several years to develop technology to process it into a high purity manganese sulfate product, which is a key raw material for battery manufacturing, particularly for use in electric vehicles. Um, and your listeners that are familiar with the story would know that we've done deals with General Motors and Stellantis to build a facility in Louisiana to refine the ore into this uh, important battery raw material. And this latest announcement is the pipeline development that we aim to roll out over the coming years where we want to build a sort of hub and spoke model with a number of these refineries around the world. And this is a very pleasing development in our uh, ongoing discussions with Japanese counterparties to develop a project in Japan. This uh, phase of the study will look at a scoping study to establish the viability in, in, at a high level of the project and then we'll delve deeper into a feasibility study and as you said leading to a final investment decision in 26. So this hopefully will be an important part of our long-term growth plan. Okay, so are there lessons from what you've already achieved in Louisiana that will, I guess, be able to be replicated in Japan, perhaps saving some of the, you know, the blood, sweat and tears that go into all of this type of development? Yeah, we expect so. I mean, we've done a, a lot of detailed engineering on the Louisiana facility and that should, um, for, to a large part, roll directly across to Japan. Um, each site is unique, so you have to obviously uh, localize it for the, the local conditions. But one of the interesting things about the uh, Tokyo Bay site uh, is that it already has established sulfuric acid production. And uh, through Nissan Chemicals, other subsidiaries, we have access to a number of the other key reagents. So there's a lot of synergies. So to some extent, we can plug and play. We can take the design from Louisiana, albeit we'll need to modify it slightly for a J Japanese setting. It should be, um, to a large part at least, uh, very similar. So yes, more streamlined to execute. Okay, um, and so uh, this hub and spoke model that you're you're planning to work toward, what could that eventually look like? You know, across how many geographies? How big of an undertaking is this, and how big could it make E25? Yeah, it's an interesting question. So it's a very scalable technology. So the the first train that we're building in Louisiana will produce about 65,000 tonnes of this high purity manganese sulphate or HPMSM as we call it. Um, that will consume less than 10% of the planned production from the mine at Butcherbird. So we have a lot of capacity to grow. So um, the idea is to replicate that scale. So each module will be approximately the same size. We have good discussions going on in Europe as well as in Japan and of course the more advanced uh, project development in Louisiana. As to how many ultimately um, we will build will depend on the demand growth that everybody's expecting to come with the transition to electric vehicles. One of the other interesting things that's happening is that battery chemistries are shifting as well as automakers look for more reliable supply and lower costs as well as the ethical and environmental considerations and manganese ticks a lot of those boxes extremely well. So we expect manganese demand to grow uh, fast and for the long term. And so we expect to build many of these refineries in various parts, targeting in the first instance, USA, Japan and, and the EU. Well, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I think a lot of investors are very uh, cautious right now on the EV thematic, part and parcel because of what's happened to the price of lithium and all the talk about hybrid vehicles and you know whether or not um, EVs and the battery technology will just continue to evolve, you know, rendering some inputs not obsolete, but less in demand. Like what, what sets manganese apart from, from some of the story that's happened with lithium? Yeah, so I think um, it's quite a different story to lithium um, in that it sits in the cathode with typical nickel and cobalt um, in an NMC cathode material. Um, the, the nickel and cobalt are high cost, um, relatively difficult to source materials. Manganese, on the other hand, is lower cost and more abundant and can be sourced from uh, ESG sort of uh, reliable, if you like, uh, jurisdictions like Australia. Um, we're sort of, you know, the NMC cathode is sandwiched um, against the LFP cathode, which is what's dominant in China, which is a very low cost um, 
battery, but it has some performance issues around uh, energy density and the like. Manganese added to either the LFP chemistry or increased in the NMC chemistry kind of sits in a sweet spot in between where it can increase the performance and reduce the cost of both those chemistries under some of the new technologies coming through. So we see the future for manganese is extremely bright and uh, we think long term uh, our forecasts will be uh, will become reality and, and the business will do very well. Okay, I know you um, undertook an SPP, a share purchase plan in June. Is there any you know, need to raise capital anytime soon? Uh, look, we're engaged in financing discussions, both on uh, the mine expansion that we want to do at Butcher Bay, but also the Louisiana facility. Um, so yes, there are going to be some movements in the financing space, but they'll be on the back of strong financing support from, in the case of the Louisiana facility, hopefully a, a DOE a supported facility under the IRA programs that they're running, but we also have some private sector funding options there. Um, and in, in Australia, we, as we've announced, we're engaged with the North Australia Infrastructure Facility to, uh, to sort of uh, cornerstone that financing. So I think you know, is there going to be some equity uh, required? Yes, but uh, we're going to minimise that and obviously do it under the right circumstances. 